What keeps you excited, sir, about the, the festival after so many years? Well, it's always fresh, and it's, it, you know, it's, uh, uh, I would, it's my immediate family here, my brother, uh, uh, sons, uh, and uh, girlfriends, girlfriends have not been here before. But it's always, it's always fresh and exciting. It's, uh, it's, for me, jazz is the music of my dreams, the music of my childhood. I grew up with and fell in love with, and fell in love too. Uh, as I've expressed before on these occasions, uh, when we celebrated, Playboy started in 1953, uh, when we celebrated our fifth anniversary in Chicago, uh, where I was born and raised, and in the uh, it seemed natural to celebrate with a jazz festival which we did in Chicago, one that became iconic and uh, remembered as, as classic because uh, so many of the jazz greats were alive there, uh, and, still, uh, and, and they all were. They all showed up. Louis Armstrong, Ellie Fitzgerald, the Miles Davis, Drew Ellington, all of them. Uh, and uh, 20 years later, for the 25th anniversary of the magazine, I was living out here, and the notion of uh, doing another classic jazz festival at the iconic Hollywood Bowl seemed like a natural. What I did not anticipate, of course, was that I thought it would be like the fifth anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> we would do it once and we would get off stage. Uh, but it, the, the festival was embraced by the community. Uh, we were having so much fun with it that uh, we just turned it into a community affair. And here we are 34 years later. Congratulations. Thank you. And Mr. Hefter, I know that you brought this legacy here from the 1970s all the way to L.A. How does it feel to be in 2012 still going strong? Well, it's nice to be alive. <laughs> High five on that one. I just celebrated my 86th birthday. Woo! Very nice. Wow. And, uh, you know, it, 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 seems, it just keeps you better. That's Hello. wonderful. Thank you so much. So what well, I'm just, you know, uh, when I arrived here today, to look out at the crowd and to see the bowl packed all the way to the less expensive seats, and maybe in the bushes behind them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, in, uh, when we didn't held the first festival here, uh, I didn't know that uh, the bowl had had something less than success with the jazz in the bowl. Uh, and we didn't know that, but the combination of uh, George Ween's ability uh, to book and our ability to promote, uh, it just became something I can like, something we wonder continue repeating. And uh, the way that it has been embraced by the community is the most satisfying thing at all, of all. I mean, uh, look at uh, all of you here. Uh, <laughs> I don't think there was this big a crowd uh, for the Very press perfect. conference last, last year. <laughs> it seems to be getting bigger. <laughs> so how does it feel to close a chapter right now with Mr. Cosby announcing his retirement as host? Well, he says he is. Cosby <laughs> 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 and I go back a lot of years. You haven't accepted his uh, resignation. And, um, yeah, huh? <laughs> I will understand if he does decide to pack it in. But it is also very clearly, as it is for me, a labor of love for Kaz. So um, maybe it's um, ado, and we will see. It seems, it seems almost impossible that 34 years ago that uh, George Wing asked me to, can you find your way to the Playboy Mountain? I said, for what? He said, you want to talk about a jazz festival. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine his disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hefner, have you given any thought to ever taking the Playboy Jazz All-Stars on the road? It would be an ideal situation to have. Well, uh, we thought about it, and as a matter of fact, we actually did a, um, a cruise uh, uh, one, one year. Uh, it's certainly possible. Great. 
And uh, obviously this year, you know, we have expanded the, the, the definition a, a little bit in terms of the music, um, in terms of what, what is really jazz, etc. But as, as uh, Duke Ellington said, good music and there's bad music, it doesn't matter what you call it. Amen. You don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. <laughs> yep. So Hugh, I see that as usual you're surrounded by beautiful ladies. Does it still touch you the way that it used to? I'm sorry, I'm having trouble. Okay, I see that as usual you're surrounded by beautiful ladies. Does it still touch you the way that it used to? Yes, yes. That's what my life is all about. Beautiful ladies and good music. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> they go together. Speaking so, of beautiful ladies, Marilyn Monroe, if there was anything you wanted the world to know about her, what would it be? Could you, could you say that again, please? My hearing Speaking of if the world wanted to know one thing about Marilyn Monroe, what would it be? Well, she is the most iconic uh, sex symbol of, uh, of our lifetime. And we'll be doing a pictorial, this is, this is the 50th anniversary of this year, of her uh, death. And we'll be doing a, a retrospective pictorial on her in the December issue. She was so important to the launch of Playboy. Can say a little bit to the how, how happy you are to be here? I'm sorry. I how happy you are to be here today? I'd be happy to, happy to be anywhere, but I'd rather, <laughs> <laughs> rather be here than any, anywhere else. Mr. Hefner. Yes. Uh, to your left. Right over here. Keep going. <laughs> are there any dreams that you have that you haven't accomplished yet? Uh, well, I grew up a dreamer of, uh, in a very typical conservative Midwestern uh, American home, but um, I dreamed impossible dreams, and uh, they came true. So I, I have as I said before, one of the luckiest cats on the planet. Mr. Your Hepburn. legacy is huge. How are the boys going to live up to this? They have some big shoes to follow. Your sons have some big shoes to well, fit into. They, they, they are very special kids, and and uh, the fact that we share the love of this music and the fact that they're here today is uh, remarkable. Mr. Hefner, I read that you said the Playboy Jazz Festival was one of your proudest accomplishments. Can you explain to us why it was so important for you to establish the Jazz Festival and why it was so important to you? Well, the music, as I said, is the music of my dreams and of my childhood. Uh, and uh, it, it is clearly and certainly the festival here is, is part of the legacy. Uh, and um, it's the most satisfying thing of all for me, as I expressed here a moment ago, is, is the extent to which it has been embraced by all of you, by the media, and by the citizenry. Uh, there was a point, you know, long ago when people thought jazz was old-fashioned and dead. Hello. <laughs> it just keeps getting better. Hello. And life keeps getting better. Mr. Well, you know, Hefner, do you that have... Had, uh, that you signed off on for me to have jazz declared the National Music of the United States went back to a committee and we've asked Congresswoman uh, Karen Bass here in Los Angeles to reintroduce that bill. So hopefully before Christmas this bill will be reintroduced to declare well, jazz. Well, that would be wonderful because very clearly it is absolutely in other words, jazz is the one true American art form, and uh, it, it has been embraced by the rest of the world. And uh, I wish uh, America would explore other good things like jazz instead of some of the other stuff. Born in America, enjoyed around the world, and we still spend millions of dollars sending jazz musicians all around the world. Mr. So Hefner, we're hoping that the this bill will get signed off this time around. Thank you very much for being supportive. Thank you. Mr. Hefner, there's a, uh, a, uh, a new stamp being issued, a Miles Davis stamp. And Miles factored into the festival pretty heavily uh, in the early days. Can you tell us a little bit about your experiences with Miles on the, uh, on the festival? Well, they are very limited. I think the, the major thing uh, uh, is, is that uh, when we, uh, in the early 1960s, uh, decided to do a uh, a regular feature in the magazine called the Playboy Interview. Okay. The very first person that we chose was Miles, and we didn't. He didn't talk a great deal about music at the time. We talked about race and about the inequities. And uh, 
it's at the it's at the stage for the rest of what we were trying to do. <coughs> Mr. Hefner, you're often credited as one of the pioneers in bringing people of color together to perform in jazz. Would you say that's one of your greatest accomplishments? Again, I can't, I can't hear from that distance. What's the... Speak up. Sorry, I have a cold. So, okay, cold. Cold. <laughs> you're often credited with being one of the pioneers in bringing people of color and whites together to perform jazz. That has to be one of your major accomplishments, is it not? Well, it, yes, it, it is true, and it is one of the things I take the greatest pride in, yes, without question. Uh, in the page of the magazine, and as soon as I, when I did my first television show, Play with the uh, and what made it really unique was the theme of the show, like Playboy After Dark afterward, was set uh, as, uh, not on a stage, but uh, as though it was in my apartment. <laughs> I think the statement is, they want you to take your hat off. I think so. Well, <laughs> the important thing is, we can all do it together. Does that mean you'll take off your hat? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, take my hat off to you. <laughs> That's it, off to you. It just seems strange, uh, you know, that uh, these many years have gone by that George Wing has called me and said, hey, you have no wants to do a jazz festival. Let's make it off the Playboy Mansion and see what happens. And here we are 30 some odd years later. And our bill is going to be reintroduced to declare jazz the national music of the United States. Oh, and I'm happy about it. Thank you very much. And people still ask me if you and I drink out of the same bottle. Because I'm, I'm 78 years old and I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hefner, I have one last question. Um, you mentioned that there's a possibility that you would be taking the Playboy uh, Jazz All-Stars on the road. Would that include uh, opening new clubs in those cities where it is uh, heavily uh, received, very well, well received? Well, we, we are certainly in exploring uh, clubs on an international level and, and uh, you know, with, with, with casinos and, and beyond. Uh, we're going to be opening a, uh, a club in Cologne, Germany. Uh, a couple of months. And Cologne's wonderful. Well, I so there, the bunnies are back big time. Fabulous. Thank you again very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here to support.